Hey guys, welcome back to J Steel RC. I'm sorry I haven't posted in a while. Uh, I've been really busy. I got a lot of projects going on. Uh, but today I'm finally unveiling part one. There's going to be two parts only. Uh, part one of the eight by eight, basically all metal um, Tatra slash Freightliner one tenth sort of crawler. So basically the whole purpose of today is I kind of want to just show you exactly what I've done with the exact parts that I've used so that at the end of part two um, you'll be able to go ahead and do the same exact thing if you want but um, I know for myself and probably everybody else out there um, as you go along a, like a, a, a build video and you're trying to do something similar usually you have your own little uh, variances and things like that but I'm just going to walk you through exactly what I've done to get to where I'm at here and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I have coming for part two. Okay, so if I go front to back, it's going to be kind of confusing. So I'm going to go top to bottom kind of, um, but I'm going to kind of just outline everything that I got going on here. So uh, first things first, <clears throat> the chassis rails uh, themselves. So what the chassis rails are is these are SCX-10 6x6 chassis rails. And what I've done is I've cut them in half. So basically what I've done is when you receive these chassis rails, this portion here is on the front. Because this is the front half of the chassis. And then this would be the 6x6 section. So it would be axle number 1, 2, and 3. Um, what I did is I cut them all in half and you'll notice here on these let me get a focus so on these they have a little tiny bend uh, or just an angle um, and it goes all about an inch you want to cut directly in the center of that you know kind of little valley in the uh, top of the chassis rail there no, it'll make sense when you do it um, so that's what the chassis is um, powering that is a 5 to 1 um, planetary reducer here um, and this just uh, has a bunch of gears in it and it takes the motor which mounts right here um, I can probably show you with this one right here the motor mounts just like that um, it's not going to be this motor I'm going with the Hobbywing Axe 540 from the planetary comes back to a three gear transmission with a dig function and all I've done is I basically removed the um, spur gear that is on this shaft um, it has a little pinhole in it already um, so all I'm going to do is just simply put a drive shaft on here uh, going from here to the planetary from the dig um, it go gets a little bit complicated okay so we're going to go into the axles here next. Okay, so I'm going to get into the mounting hardware and everything like that here in a minute. Uh, but I do want to cover the axles because the axles are very important. Um, now, mind you, this 8x8, the axles are all built on a pass-through design. Now, a pass-through design is when the transmission here in the center sends a drive line to the intermediate axle in this case there's an intermediate axle on the front and the back the intermediate axle then passes through the drive shaft here to the rear axle and or front axle so um, now when we go over this here front axle will be axle number one axle number two axle number three and then the rear axle will be axle number four just so that everybody kind of keeps track of what's going on now I am doing pass through <clears throat> um, I initially was going to do a very complicated um, drive shaft rotation reversal deal with these GCM transfer cages which are um, awesome quality to be honest with you the machining on them the gears and the bearings and everything was like microscopic perfect fit when I was assembling it very impressed with this this is out of Canada um, it's just a you know one-to-one -one ratio that's all it is it's just a transfer case um, so I was gonna do that but there's 
too much drive shaft stuff going on with the four link and servo on axle setup that I have. So there just wasn't enough room in there with the motor and everything um, to do that. So I'm doing pass through. Some people um, say that pass through is just not the way to go. Well, so be it. This one is going to be pass through. Uh, number one is a TRX-6 rear axle. Axle number two is a TRX-4 rear axle. Axle number three is a TRX-4 rear axle. And axle number four is a TRX-6 rear axle again. So essentially you have TRX-4, TRX-4 rear, TRX-6, TRX-6 rear. Um, and the reason I'm doing that <clears throat> is for drive shaft rotation. Um, so here I have it flipped over here so I can kind of just sum it up for you real quick. So if the output yoke of the transmission, let's say it's spinning clockwise like this, and it's going down to the first axle here, aka TRX-4 rear axle. If it's spinning clockwise going into the yoke here, that means the ring gear will be spinning the axle shafts or the wheels forwards. In other words, this ring gear will also be spinning, if you're looking at the vehicle, counterclockwise. That means that the second yoke coming out for the pass-through axle is going to be spinning the opposite way. It's going to be spinning counterclockwise. Okay, so when it comes into the rear axle, that just means that the ring gear needs to be on the other side. Times two for the front, same thing for the front, except these are going to be steer axles. And you can see there, I have the Injora uh, four link slash um, servo on axle mounts. And that gives you the ability to do a four link conversion versus a three link with a pan hard on the TRX four system axles. So I lifted it up a little bit taller here so you can kind of see better underneath it um, at the front axles here. So this is axle one and axle two. Um, I just wanted to go over the steering on this. A lot of people are probably gonna have some questions on that. Um, now, when you buy the um, drive shafts for the front axles uh, for a TRX four or TRX six, um, those have basically CVD um, joints in them to allow the uh, front wheels to turn and the drive shafts to spin and power the portal boxes. Um, the issue is uh, these drive shafts, uh, the lengths that you get for those are not the same as the length drive shafts you need for the rear axle housings, which is what I have on the front of this rig. So essentially what you got to do is you got to order a whole bunch of sets of the front ones. They're kind of cheap. They're not really too expensive. You need to order four sets essentially. And then you need to cut down to length the longer of the two and then square it off at the end just like it would be um, going from the spool to the portal. Um, so you kind of need to cut the length the drive shafts that go inside the axle housings. Um, and you'll kind of see that in part two. That'll be the in the next video. Uh, but it is kind of a little bit kind of a pain in the butt. Um, mounting them up. These are Intigy Billet 6x6 uh, six six rear link mounts. Um, and again, just because it is the same, it's the rear half of a 6x6 six six and the rear half of a 6x6. Six six, um, it's the same just times two. So back here is the same thing. Uh, the Intigy Billet. Um, link mounts here for the rear axle same thing um, holding up the uh, this is going to be basically a body plate here um, holding it all up is these are axial wraith um, shock mounts here so these are one and this is two here you can see I just have it standing up um, and I just have those kind of bolted in there. That's also going to be the shock mounts here. I'm still waiting to figure out exactly what length I need, um, ordering some tires and everything like that. Um, and then up here, uh, this is not how it's going to be, but I just kind of have some shock keys here um, just to kind of hold it level and everything. I leveled it. So I'm going to go with the scalar fab uh, front bumper. Uh, the one I'm actually going to get is for the element. 
um, it's just going to work out best for this because I want the bumper to be straight off the chassis rails. These are an SCX 10 base chassis rails, um, however this is the front end so um, I, I want the element style. Um, if they don't exactly match up to the width I'll just make it work. Um, and then I got a cross brace here which is going to protect the motor. Inside here is going to be the ESC here in front of the motor. Um, back here will be a drive shaft coming from planetary to transmission. There's will be a shallow um, or a low profile one tenth servo here to operate this dig function. Um, and if you're not familiar with what a dig transmission does, um, so as this lever goes forward and back, it basically engages or disengages the rear yoke and front yoke. So that engages the power essentially to the rear half or, the, or to the front half. Um, this is just a simple dig system. Um, so all this one does is when this arm comes back, it locks these wheels from rotating. And then in the middle position, it's neutral. So the, on, the only wheels that have power will be the front wheels. The rear wheels will just be free spinning. And that's just going to help it um, with the turn radius because it is going to be quite a long system for one-tenth trails, which is what I plan to run it on. Um, so I just want to have the dig functionality. Um, this is just a kind of an eBay um, unit. You know, it's kind of a simple design. I do have some spares on hand, so if anything goes wrong, I can just cut that off and replace it not a big deal um, moving along all of the four links are all pretty much different lengths I, I, I haven't taken exact measurements of all of the links yet I'm sure you guys are gonna want those um, but at the same time I just ordered a whole bunch of I think I ordered four packs of these links here from eBay um, that's all they are um, and I kind of just intermingled them some of them have um, angled ends and that kind of helps out for the shorter links and things like that. So tying all this in are these, uh, these are ATC or ATO PRC. Uh, these are SCX 10, um, just cross braces here. Um, they're just to hold the chassis links together and everything. Um, the next part of the chassis system here. So what these are is these are basically um, skid drop brackets. So what these are supposed to do is mount here, allowing you to bolt the skid lower down uh, if you wanted to run like a lifted truck or something like that. Uh, for my application, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I have a new set of these because these are all drilled out. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, bore out the end holes here so they fit over the four screws here, the front and rear, and then put this over that right there, like that, and that will be the bed mount. Um, the bed, the rest of the bed is going to be mounted um, in here and here, and then between the rails here, right between axle number four and number three, is going to be the battery here. It'll be about a 52 milliamp, something in that range that'll fit in here. I'm just going to put an aluminum. Uh, piece of stock metal there is just to set it on and then the bed will sit over the top of that um, I am going to leave a little cutout so you can see the drive shaft coming from the planetary to the three gear That'll be pretty cool to see that spinning as you're driving it um, One of the next things on the agenda is tires. I haven't exactly settled on a tire um, I'm kind of leaning more towards 2.2 scale size tires um, so they're about 4.85 outer diameter, but they are on a 2.2 rim. Um, it is a little bit tougher to find anti-foams for those um, that are of quality or that have good reviews or anything like that. Um, I am willing to try new products though, so I kind of am on the hunt right now for some 2.2 scale size um, anti-foams. Um, so right here you can tell, now it's actually kind of funny, uh, my dynamite toolkit uh, bits here. It actually just so happens to be, um, you can see the axle number one and two, and then axle number three and four. It just so happens to be right on par with my bit. And then you can tell here axle number one and two is about the exact same. Um, it is not the same distance between axle two and three, 
Um, and also another note is that axle number three is further back away from the skid than axle number one, or um, I'm sorry, axle number two is. Um, and then the skid itself here, I'll flip this over. So the skid itself here, uh, this is a hot racing bearing skid for the SCX-10 platforms. Um, these have bearings on them. Uh, this is going to be pretty heavy. Uh, I don't really want to get high centered. I want to try and avoid it as much as possible. So I don't know if the bearings are really going to do a whole lot. Um, they do help on my class one truck over here. Um, they do help on this quite a bit. Um, and helps prevent it from getting hung up. I know I have zip ties right there. That helps a lot. Um, but I've, done, I've been doing a lot of work to this truck. I lowered the body. I took it out recently. Um, I am going to get a Scalar Fab Class 1 bumper set for this as well. Um, I'm going to be doing a good feature on this. I have anti-foams on the way. Um, I'm really excited to showcase this truck again. So another good video of this truck coming on the way here soon. As far as the body goes, um, I pretty much have these set up here. Uh, these are just a generic um, side skid plate here for uh, SCX-10 or TRX-4 chassis, pretty basically any 110th crawler. Um, but I have it pretty much extended and everything, uh, just perfect to mount up to uh, the Scale 3D RC. Um, it's the 82 um, Freightliner uh, cab over engine body. Um, it's going to work basically, I I'm hoping it fits pretty much right on top of this because um, I do want a roll bar to go over it because it will be 3D printed and this truck will probably get beat up. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what size exactly. Like I said, I kind of want to go with 2-2 scale size, 4.85, 4.9 maybe. I don't know if I can get away with it. Um, so I got to do some more measurements. Um, I got to build the axles out, which is freaking expensive. Um, but once I get that all done, then I'm going to focus more on the shock length, which is all going to depend on where the wheels sit on the axles and where the bed sits and everything. So I got a lot to do for part two, but I really was just super excited about unveiling this. And I just kind of want to show you guys. Um, and if I didn't cover anything, uh, please drop it in the comments. I'll make sure to bring it up again in part two. If there's anything on this that I didn't exactly cover. Um, I'm hoping to have actual link lengths for people who want to do an exact replica build, if there is any. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, pretty stoked. So just going to keep going. Um, it is a very expensive project, so little by little.